What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, what could it be that's hiding in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? Is this a model kit or what's in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? How hard is it to put together? Is it made of leather? Hey, what's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today's episode of What's in the Box was filmed right here at Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another What's in the Box. This time around, this again is my private collection. And I'm building some 1920s cars for a display I want to do at the Museum of the Highwood for our silent movie nights. Because we want to show um, some Laurel and Hardy. And uh, I thought it would be great to make a 1920s scene using the old Laurel and Hardy Model T. But this is another car that's from the 20s. Uh, this is a Be Beverly Hillbillies car that was on the show. As you can see, there's lots of pictures of the show down here, and then you got Grandma's park bench sitting up on top, and this sort of thing. But there's something unique about this. This is one of the only Oldsmobile model kits of this vintage that are on the market. Now, how do I know it's an Oldsmobile? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, yeah. And there's some pictures of it. You can see on the side of the box different views, the engine and everything. And I think that's the same. Yeah, this was from the RC2 days. Came out in 2004. Originally it was came out in 68 or something. And there's our instructions there. Showing the kid putting it together, looking happy as can be. Tells you the painting instructions and it shows you the engine and the uh, how the suspension goes. As you can see, it's not your Model T because the springs are um, there's four springs in it that are elliptical, not going transverse like the T. And there's assembling it. Putting the front end all on. <laughs> Granny's bench. And then completing it. And then it shows the Granny's hot rod with the big motor in there. Put the hot rod motor in. I don't know if anybody actually built Granny's hot rod. I've never really seen much of it you know, out there on the internet or anything. Just putting it all together. And the finished thing. <laughs> anyway, that's your instructions. Now looking at the kit, I haven't really opened up. Oh, maybe I have. You get all these cool wheels chrome grill insert for Granny's Hot Rod. There's the radiator grill. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the Oldsmobile logo. That's one of the ways I know. Um, does this actually... I don't think this tells you what, what George Barris did. Or George Barris Studios, even. But there's the uh, fenders. One thing that's kind of annoying with this kit is that these are worn out to simulate the uh, Beverly Hillbillies. It's the front floor mats. The problem is if you want to build a, a fully restored Olds, you're always contending with worn out floor mats, no matter how new the car is. <laughs> None of these have been cut off the parts tree. There's the frame. You can see this is pretty huge. There's your wheels. These are also very big. It's because Oldsmobile back in the day was big. In comparison, here's your Model T frame. You can see that it's like almost 
a car and a half on the Oldsmobile. <laughs> so this will make a nice big model for that diorama. Okay, here's the other part tree. This is part of the Granny's Hot Rod. What's nice though is they give you all these suitcases and beer jugs, or moonshine jugs, if you ever wanted to make a, a Model T variation with moonshine jugs on it. It's another interesting thing. There's the grill. That's the insert, but it's the same insert that's been chrome-plated. Perhaps it's for the other side. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. Mystery solved. <laughs> There's the back fender bits. And the hood sides for Granny's Hot Rod with the exhaust ports going through. This is the Granny Hot Rod hood with the opening and the stock hood. There's the body. The body tub. Now according to what it said, George Barris took and cut, this was like a four passenger sedan or something, and he cut it and he shortened it up and re-welded it on there. But I want to show you a picture coming up of uh, something that I found in, in a book. Okay, so here's the pleated seats for the granny's hot rod, and there's the granny park bench. Now my dad built two of these. And he built them as stock Oldsmobiles of the era. So I have two extra of the bench, which is good diorama material. So a bunch of the places are going to have a wooden park bench. <laughs> There's the stake bed side it's for your pickup. Headlights, springs, dashboard, whatever that is. Cross member underneath. There's the Oldsmobile four-cylinder. Look at that huge, huge uh, front axle. And then we got, this is some of the hot rod bits, I think. Another grill insert. Interesting. Dashboard, or a firewall. Exhaust pipes and big, big differential there. And then what's this? The wooden floor back for your pickup. Oops. <laughs> Bench seat, engine block, and transmissions for both versions. I believe that's the original Olds one. And then what's in this baggie? Tires. Those are hot rod tires. Ah, I'm bringing them up to my own eye, not the camera eye. And of course you got your glass in there. Now, let me put this away and I'll show you. I've got to put it upside down. I'll show you this picture of the Oldsmobile that I found. George Barris actually didn't have to do all this chopping up and whatever because, well, maybe he did. Okay, I'll put this away for now. Now, stock, regular, out of the factory Oldsmobile would not have Granny's seat and the beer jugs all stuck on it. But let's take a look at this. So I picked up this book at one of the auto museums up in Cal or in Alberta, the Reynolds o uh, Museum. This is a history of Oldsmobile going all the way up to about 1976, I believe. Oh, no, 1981. And this guy has compiled every picture and of every Oldsmobile that was ever made. Okay. Now, the thing is, somewhere in here, and I should have bookmarked it. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. There's a race car version of that Oldsmobile. And Jimmy Flintstone actually makes a race body similar to that. So if you ever wanted to convert it, shout out to Jimmy Flintstone. And uh, he should be able to get you something. Okay. This is sort of what Barris started with, according to what I read on the Beverly Hillbillies. This is your big touring car, which would be like this. And he hacked out 
right behind the door and brought the back end up into it. Now I'm just gonna find this picture of the real thing. Okay, this is what I wanted to show. This is from 1918. But you see, Oldsmobile made a very rare pickup, which Barris could have actually used as a Beverly Hillbillies truck if he had one. It says this was a very unique and very rare offering that Olds made apparently in 1918 only. Based on the six cylinder Model 37, this is an interestingly little pickup factory built by Oldsmobile. The bed on this model was almost five feet long, 39 inches wide, and 14 inches deep. It is believed that a few of these car trucks found used at the factory in Lansing and also at the various Olds factory sales brochures across the country, or sales branches across the country. It was priced at 1,195 FOB, Lansing, fully equipped with roadster top and nickel box rail. Quite the truck. Yep. So, Barris could have used one of those for his hillbilly truck instead of cutting up a, a coach. But anyway, <laughs> I guess it's all right. So you could essentially build yourself a proper pickup box at the back here by getting rid of all this stuff up top on the granny's wagon. Yeah, so there's your Oldsmobile. The only thing missing though is a windshield as these cars had one, but I don't know. So my dad says you could probably fake one up. <laughs> so even that has a the windshield screen. But judging by that Oldsmobile, it's uh, anywhere from about 1918 to 1924. Because you can see, I don't know how clearly, there. You see that horseshoe style radiator on there. And then when you get into 1925, Oops, the radiator becomes squared. So, essentially, like I say, this car is anything from back then, in those years. You could even make the Beverly Hills Billy's car into one of these, uh, uh, one of these depot hacks or whatever that they used around the train stations if you wanted to. So it might be an idea for the High River thing. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Look out for this book if you want to do conversions on the Beverly Hillbillies car, which would be neat. And thanks for watching and seeing what's in an old style box. And we'll talk to you soon.